Hi, I'm Linda, this is Dr. K, and today we'll be doing yoga as part of the Unify practice. So let's get going. Today's theme is strength and stability. chin towards the chest and start slowly rolling towards the ground, arms away from the body, crown of the head pointing towards the floor, keeping a bend in the knee. Now you're going to make your feet hips width distance and you measure that by using two fists right in between the arches or you can also step on your palms and where your thumbs lightly touch, that is also another way to measure hips width distance. So I just showed you two ways in how your body fits into itself. And now really try to keep a bend in the knees, finding where the chest and the thigh makes contact. And from here, you could grab opposite elbow, you could interlace fingers behind the head, and this hang. And once more, feeling the contact between the bottoms of your feet and the ground, and from rooting into the ground, then maybe slowly opening the backs of the knees, lifting the hips high into the air. Hangs are extremely demanding. They require you to be in your legs. And being in your legs is all about stamina. Today's theme, strength and stability, we're really trying to work our stability from the foundation up. Your bottom floor from your belly button down, your hips, your pelvis, is all about your stability, your foundation, your substantiation. With every breath, find more contact between your chest and your thigh, making a clean crease here at the hips, lifting the hips higher, keeping a bend in the knees. If this is tiring, yes, it should be tiring, especially if this is a new form for you, but it's okay, we're here to practice together to make your form formidable. Walk your fingertips forward, keeping your hips in place, your fingertips going in the opposite direction. So you're pulling your body in two different directions at once. 
So imagine someone holding your hips back and your fingertips are reaching as far out as you can. Maintain that bend in the knees, keeping that contact in the crease in the hips. And walk your fingertips to the left, keeping your right hip in place. And walk your fingertips to the right, keeping your left hip in place. Walk your finger back, back to the middle. And then slowly roll yourself up. Taking your sweet time. Sagging one vertebrae at a time. Neck last. Rolling the shoulders back. Interlace fingers over the head. You can move back so you can grab the whole body there. You guys, they can see us. Let's tilt to the left, opening the right side body. And as you tilt to the left, really feel how your right foot grounds into the floor. And then tilt to the right, feeling how the left foot grounds into the floor. So always play with the cross reference. Go back to the center, releasing the hands, tucking the shin towards the chest, and rolling back down again. Nice and slow, keeping a bend in the knees, coming back into this forward fold. Just hang, grab an opposite elbow, arms by the ears, nod your head yes, shake your head no. Bring your feet together so you have one big foot. And you're gonna bend your knees a lot. And then you're gonna bring your right elbow all the way over to the left side, trying to find your left knee into your right armpit. Forming your right hand into the fist, left hand grabs that fist, punching into the left hand to get yourself around yourself, right eye towards the ceiling. Other side, left elbow over right knee. Maybe your right knee fits into a right into a left armpit as you go for a twist. Coming back to center, bring your feet back to hips with distance. So remember, we measure with the two fists, and imagine the arch is squeezing your fists together, keeping a bend in the knees. Now you're going to punch your arms forward and look out. Very nice. So you have a flat back and then pressing into the bottoms of your feet, slowly coming out. And then sitting your butt way back, way back to come back in how you came out. Back to a fold. And then finding your fist up, making yourself punchy, and then pressing into the bottoms of your feet to come out in a back bend. And then sitting your butt all the way back to come back down. Once more. Punching all the way out. Again, your body's moving in two different directions. Your hips towards the back, your fists towards the front, making your spine spacious as you press into the bottoms of your feet to come back up. Now, if this is familiar, it's because we just did a chair pose. So traditionally, chair, you come up from the top and you sit in. And what we just did is we came in from the bottom. So it's a different experience. And you can try any variation. You can try grabbing the opposite elbow. This is probably the most difficult variation. My favorite variation is hands behind the back, interlaced fingers, 
or reverse prayer is probably difficult to get into if you haven't opened your shoulders yet. So keeping the vision forward, you having your own back, so this helps you keep into your back by keeping the knees bent as you come in and out of the chair. You can also do interlaced fingers underneath the chin. So these are all different arm variations that you can take to come in and out of this chair. Oh, just folding and unfolding at the hips. So take three more on your own, any variation of your choice. from the bottoms of your feet, just like we did in mountain pose. Always finding your roots to rise. And when you're done with your three, come back to that forward hang. Grabbing opposite elbows, seeing maybe if you can find even more contact than before between your chest and your thighs. Place the palms on your floor, place the knees on the floor. Let's come into a tabletop. So tops of feet plugged into the ground. And we're going to measure our hands. So bringing our middle fingers to touch. That way you know your shoulder width apart. And you can start flipping the wrists. Lifting the elbows to flip the wrists. For people that spend a lot of time sitting in front of the computer, typing, which is pretty much everyone nowadays, very important to practice opening the wrists. So when you open the wrists, you're able to access your collarbones, giving you greater access to your lungs so you can take deeper breaths. Now with both your wrists flipped, making sure your wrists are underneath your shoulders, keeping a micro bend in the elbows, you're going to start moving your spine. Inhale for cat. Exhale for cow. In and out. Always pay close attention to your foundation, noticing your points of contact. Your knees are plugged into the ground. The tops of feet are plugged into the ground. The tops of your feet are your anchor. It's really what's holding you down. And in these cat cows, you can always play with the tempo. You can always speed it up. Starting the wave all the way from the pelvis. So you're moving your pelvis forward and back, forward and back, and the rest of the spine is going along for the ride. Creating heat, starting a fire. Slowly come back. Bring the wrists back to neutral. Tuck your toes, and you're going to come sit back on the heels. Toes tucked. So here you're also stacking. Sit bones are over the heels, heels are over the balls of the feet, shoulders are over the hips. Nice and tall. For some people this could be extremely strenuous because they're not used to opening their feet like this. If that's the case, you can always place a block. This will relieve some of the pressure. From here, Let's interlace fingers over the head, and we're going to do a shoulder floss, going all the way around. For some people, you might just find yourself circling over your head. That's totally fine. You'll find more range the more you practice this motion. And make sure you go the other direction. We're just getting into all the joints. 
We started in the beginning with all those chairs and the folds and the hip joint, the largest joint in our body. Always be kind to your hips. They hold a lot. They hold us up. And now we're in the shoulder joints where we do all the doing. Release the hands. Tap out the tops of the feet. Come back and massage the tops of your ankles. And then maybe you could lift the knees. This really opens the tops of the feet. You can think about the tops of your feet like the tops of your hand, like the shell of your back. So you want to make sure it's pliant. Let's come into a plank. So always be sure to measure shoulders over wrists. This is your foundation. And down dogs are so common, but we really want to pay attention to all the details. So shoulders over wrists, heeled over balls of feet, and measuring out the same way we measured before, bringing the middle fingers to touch. That way you know your shoulder width distance. And then also, you could also bring your heel to the ball of the foot. That way you know your hips width distance. This is the third time I showed you how to measure hip width distance. So from your plank, knees bent, hips high, downward facing dog. I like doing down dog with my hips high, heels high, knees bent. Roll it forward, upward facing dog. And bring it back, downward facing dog. Roll it forward, upward facing dog. Inhale, down dog. Exhale, up dog. In and out. At your own pace, you can take your time. I like keeping a bend in the knees and a down dog because then it releases your lower back. And I like keeping my toes tucked in my up dog so that way I'm not sinking to my depths. I'm giving myself a boundary. And make sure to keep your vision out. You're not looking at your own pelvis. Have you ever seen a dog look at its own pelvis when it's stretching? Come back to a down dog. Lunge the right foot forward. Left knee down. And make sure that your right leg is at a 90 degree angle. You could do this by using a blocked measure. That way you know it's at 90 degrees. Or you can plug your right knee into your right armpit. Bring the fingertips out. You should feel very stable. Like you're not falling over to one side. Sometimes you have to walk your foot a little bit out, making sure it really fits into your armpit here. Bringing back the top of the left foot down. Once again, the top of your left foot is your anchor. So I'm tucking the toes, bringing the top of your left foot down. Uh, your back foot, yeah, there you go. So plugging into that back foot, you're gonna peel your chest off your thigh, coming up into Anjaniasana Crescent Moon. Now here in Crescent Moon, I really want you to think about opening your pubis navel sternum. You want to open your front body as much as you can so you can access your back bend. If this is very strenuous, you can always put a block underneath the thigh. This helps stabilize your hips so that from a more stable foundation, that way you are rooted and then you can more easily rise.
You could grab opposite elbow, interlace fingers behind the head. Lots of variations here to help you further access your back bend. Release the hands, bring it back to a plank. And from your plank, bring it back to a down bow. Lunge the left foot forward, right knee down. Top of right foot down, making sure the top of your right foot is plugged in. And finding your left knee into your left inner armpit. Maybe bring the fingertips out so you can feel that connection of the knee into the armpit. Looking forward and peeling your chest off your thighs, bending deep into the left knee. Sometimes I see people, they're stuck up here. Tuck the pelvis, pelvis forward. So imagine your pelvis, the momentum is like swooping up and out. And feel free to take any arm variation we did. Release the arms. Step your left foot back into a plank. Always measuring your down dog from a plank. I spent a lot of time talking about measuring. But your body was designed very precisely so it could fit itself. So why not use that to your advantage? Lunge the right foot forward. And now options, you could keep the left knee down or you could keep the left knee, uh, the left ball of foot plugged in. Really depends on how you're feeling today and if you're ready for this. Right hand inside right foot. So right heel of hand aligns with right heel of foot. You should feel your right shoulder by your right knee, left hand on your sternum, oh sorry, sacrum. And then you're gonna start opening towards the left for side angle. Now you can do this exact pose with the knee down. Either is fine, you're still getting that twist, that spin. Maybe bring your right eye towards the ceiling. But these poses, these warrior variations, they're all about setting the stability of your foundation. So once your foundation is set, then you're able to free up your upper body to spin in any which direction you want. Bring the right foot back, back to a plank, press it up to the down dog, hips high. Lunge the left foot forward. And again, your choice, right knee down, or keeping the right knee um, elevated. Left heel of hand against left heel, right hand on the sacrum. The sacrum is really about noticing your stability so you can feel that you're not leaning towards one side or the other. You want your hips stable before you spin to open yourself. Maybe bringing your left eye towards the ceiling. Coming back down. Step the left foot back. Let's bring it to a down dog. And roll it forward to an up dog. You should feel really good. Knees down, knees wide, big toes touch. Let's bring it to a child's pose. Taking a moment to recenter yourself. Noticing where your legs make contact with the earth where your upper body is in contact with your lower body. A 
Let's bring the child's pose into a twist. So bring the right elbow in front of the left knee. Right hand comes into a fist. Left hand grabs that fist. And you're going to spin around, bringing your right eye towards the ceiling, really punching into the open hand to find a deeper twist. Other side, left elbow in front of right knee, left hand comes into a fist, right hand grabs that fist as you spin. Coming back towards center. And keep staying on your fingertips, looking forward. So you could feel, again, your hips are sitting back while your fingertips are going forward. Your body is moving two different directions at once. Feeling how spacious and how long your spine is. Call your fingertips up. And coming back to a plank. Bringing it back to a downward facing dog. This time you're going to make your down dog a little shorter by stepping your feet in as much as you need to so that they are completely flat on the ground. Yeah, keeping a bend in the ear. So you're in a shorter down dog. Your hips are the highest point. Now we're going to do a three legged dog. So let's lift the right leg into the air. Nice and high. You can keep your foot flexed or pointed. Keeping the hips even. Now right leg down, left leg into the air. Release, putting the foot down. Let's bring it into a twist. So the left hand is going to grab right heel. As you bring yourself around, maybe your chin finds your right armpit. And other side, right hand grabs the bottom of left heel. As you spin around, maybe your right knee finds your right armpit. Left armpit finds the chin. Come back into your short down dog, really feeling all four points of contact with the earth. Now we're going to set up for a variation of warrior three. So you walk your fingertips back a little, so you're back in a hang. And let's start with the right leg. So you're going to interlace the fingers behind your right shin. And shifting the weight all into your right leg, you're going to lift the left leg into the air. Keeping a bend in the right knee, finding the contact between your chest and your thigh, looking forward. You can also play with it. Remember in the beginning we did variations with the arms. You can also try how it feels coming into warrior three with fingers interlaced behind the back. So that way you have your own back. Yeah, it's always good to look forward and out because that's the direction you're heading towards. So we started in a forward fold, finding the contact between the chest and the thigh, finding a bend in the leg, 
fingers interlace with behind your left shin, lifting the right leg off the ground, looking forward. Maybe taking a different arm variation. You can always do the traditional warrior three, which is either ooh, the palms or the arms. But I like doing it with more contact. I like having them, the fingers behind the back. So I know I have my own back. When you're done, coming back into the forward fold. Seeing if you can find even more contact between the chest and the thighs. Cup your heels with your hands. And bring the hips down. We're going to practice some hip hinges. So you're just lifting the hips up and down. Now this could feel super strenuous if you're not stacked. So I'm going to give you some hacks. One hack, using a towel underneath your heels. That way, your gravity is already a little tilted forward. That's one way to make it easier. If this is still burning your quads, you can also use a counterweight. So finding your knees into your armpits and using a counterweight, it doesn't have to be a block, it could be a bug. I like using textbooks. And this should also make it easier. Making sure your feet are parallel, yeah. It's up and down, you're just moving from the hips. Something we're not used to doing. <laughs> so if you feel a burn, completely normal. All right. From here, we're going to do variations of Malasana squat. So keeping the feet parallel, sometimes I even like putting a block there so I make sure my feet stay parallel. And you're going to try to bring your elbows towards the ground as you look out. So try to keep your heels planted. So it's easier to have a towel underneath so your heels stay grounded. But if you don't have these props, you could totally do it without any props as well. But the idea is that you want to make yourself as compact as possible. I like to think of it as like I'm a snail coming back into my shell. Keeping the vision out, bringing the elbows down towards the ground. So this is a variation of squat you don't usually encounter. But once you're really able to come into the squat, you unlock so many other poses, and a lot of them are arm balances, because the arm balances require you to find your center of gravity as you are becoming more and more compact. This is also a great pose if you're menstruating or if you're preparing to give birth. It really requires a lot of core strength to make yourself this small. Bring your feet together. And now you're going to interlace your hands underneath your feet. So you can hold on to your heels. Sorry, your knees are outside. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So you're looking out and you're lifting your hips up. There's another variation of squat. Yeah, so your fingers are interlaced underneath your heels. Your arms are inside your knees. You're looking out, lifting the hips up. So remember, you're not sitting your tailbone down. You're trying to lift the hips up. 
Again, these are great for cramps, for preparation for giving birth. Engaging the hips is really tough. It takes a lot more strength than you think. <laughs> and release, come to sit. You could stay, stay seated on a blanket or you can sit on the floor, extending the legs. And we're going to come to a forward fold. Try to peel the flesh away from your sit bones, trying to find the center of your pelvic floor, rooting into the mat. Feet flexed, knees bent, and once more, finding that crease that we were talking about, that clean fold between the chest and the thighs. And then you can come to either cup the heels or the tops of the feet as you come to fold. It is very strenuous, you could always stack blocks or books underneath your forehead to support yourself. Or you could roll a cushion or a blanket over your shin so you have something to rest your forehead on. So these folds are really about finding as much contact as you can between your upper body and your lower body. Like I mentioned before, your lower body from your belly button down is all about your foundation and your stability. Your upper body from your belly button to your palate, that is your ability, your capabilities, your capacity. So when they come into contact, you have this inner dialogue of how your stability can substantiate your ability and how your ability to substantiate your stability. So this is why it's important to find contact with yourself, to initiate this inner dialogue. Places where your body don't come together, that's really where you should be asking, how do I find myself? How do I make better contact with myself? It's not good or bad, it's all simply information. And in practicing yoga, we develop these techniques to help us to use all these techniques to our greatest advantage, to empower us to really find our stability, our grounding, our rooting to this earth so that we can truly rise. Imagine the breath traveling below your belly button and slowly back out, in and out through the nose. Three more breaths. opposite elbow looking out to come up and rooting into your pelvic floor fold and unfold a few more times Making yourself nice and tall as you twist.
Let's come to a seat. You could sit in a chair really in any uh, position as long as you're in a 90 degree angle. So I recommend sitting in Virasana Hero's Pose, knees together, heels apart. And if your pelvic floor does not reach the ground, then simply place a block right underneath yourself. You should feel like you're being elevated on a throne. And even if your pelvic floor does reach the ground, still support yourself so you sit higher, so you elevate yourself. Start by uh, forming a frame. So grab opposite elbow, fitting your elbow directly into the palm of your hand. It should be a ball and net fit. Inhale to open, exhale to close. In, out, in, out. And once you know you have this steady frame, you can always speed it up. In, out, in, out. Inhale, keep your arms overhead. And exhale, interlacing fingers behind the back. Thumbs directly between the shoulder blades. So your hands should look like this. And again, in this position, you really have your own back and you're bringing your lungs to the front, allowing yourself to take a deeper breath of air. Inhale to the left, exhale to the right. In. into your foundation, making sure your legs are firmly rooted into the ground. Keep your eyes slightly ajar, keeping a soft gaze. Bring it back to the center. Form two fists in front of the chest. Inhale and exhale coming forward. In, out, in, out. There are several ways to think about this. You can simply just move the arms in, out, in, out. Or you can move your entire body like we did in cat cow, moving from the pelvis, the forward and back, the cat cow spine. So really engaging your entire body in these motions. And I like to think of this as an anti-aging pose because what you're really doing here is you're breaking down the hardness of your shell, of your upper back, allowing your back to be more pliant and opening your front body so that you are more available to your potential and what is in front of you. Big inhale, arms overhead, thumbs interlacing, holding the breath up top. Take three more sips of air through the mouth. Hold it full, three more sips through the nose. Seal the pelvic floor, channel the energy up your spine towards the crown of your head. 
and pop the cork, exhaling out. Resting, palms up on your lap. Taking advantage of every moment of stillness to reorganize yourself. Noticing where you make contact with the earth and your legs. How you make contact between your pelvic floor and your seat. Noticing how your hips support your spine, how your spine supports your skull, how you hold yourself up. Thank you for joining us today. Hope you are able to connect more with your strength and stability. And we'll practice again with you next time.